Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to take a look at the cosine addition formula, which is the relationship that you see right up there. It states that the cosine of an angle alpha plus an angle beta is equal to the cosine of alpha times the cosine of beta minus the sine of alpha times the sine of beta. And in this video, we're going to derive this relationship. We're going to show where it comes from and why it's, uh, why it's actually true. And to derive this formula, we're going to use a geometric diagram because after all, isn't that what sine and cosine are all about? Uh, they're ratios. They are ratios of side lengths from right triangles. So we're going to use this diagram uh, to, to help us derive this relationship here. But the beauty of it is once we know the cosine addition formula, we can then use it uh, to algebraically derive some other important uh, compound angle formulae, such as the cosine subtraction formula and the addition and subtraction formulas for sine and tan. And I'll put a link in the description for this video for a document that will show you those uh, algebraic derivations. But for now, yeah, we're going to take a geometric approach to deriving the cosine addition formula. So let's get started. Okay, to set up the geometric diagram that's going to help us derive the cosine addition formula, we'll start by drawing some axes. So let's try our x-axis here and our y-axis there and we'll call the origin point O. Next thing we'll do is we'll uh, create an angle using a terminal arm, and that will look like this, and we'll call that resulting angle alpha. Now let's draw another terminal arm to create another angle, and we'll set it up like that, and we'll call the resulting angle that is formed between the two terminal arms beta. Now we know that we have angle alpha here, and we have angle beta here. So the angle formed from the x-axis all the way to that second terminal arm is going to be whatever alpha plus beta is. Now let's label some points and draw some other lines that are going to help us out here. We'll call the point up here at the end of this terminal arm here, and we'll call that A, and we're going to drop a perpendicular, that is we're going to draw a perpendicular line segment uh, from A down to this terminal arm such that it hits this arm at a right angle. And when we do that, we get something that looks like that, and we'll call this point of intersection here D. Now you might say, why didn't you call it point B? It seems to be the next thing that uh, we would choose after point A, and that just has to do with the, uh, the way that I initially set up this diagram. We'll see all those other letters in a minute. Okay, let's carry on here. Uh, we'll draw another perpendicular, and this time we're going to go from A down to the x-axis. So it hits at a 90 degree angle there, and we'll call that point of intersection B. Let's label the intersection of these two segments here, point F. Okay, let's draw another perpendicular. This time we'll go from D down to the x-axis. And we'll call that point of intersection C. So you can see that what's happening here is we're creating a bunch of right triangles, uh, which are definitely going to be useful when we start talking about sine and cosine. Okay, moving on. Let's draw another perpendicular from point D. This time we'll go to the left, so we hit segment AB at a 90 degree angle, and we'll call that point of intersection E. So now we have our diagram. So let's start talking about some relationships that are formed in this diagram. And we'll begin by talking about some relationships that occur on the x-axis, specifically uh, regarding the lengths of some line segments. Line segment OB, line segment BC, and line segment OC. Now we know that we have segment OB right here. And another way that we could express OB is to say that it is equal to OC minus BC. So take that whole length OC, subtract this BC length, and what you get is OB. So we'll write out that relationship here. We have OB equals OC minus BC. And I'll highlight that in blue because I am going to use that relationship in a moment. Now, let's talk about uh, another relationship. To do that, we are going to look at triangle OAB, which I've highlighted in green here. And in that triangle, we are going to talk about the angle uh, alpha plus beta. And you might say, well, why are we going to talk about alpha plus beta? Well, remember in our cosine addition formula, it started off by saying um, cosine of alpha plus beta equals something. So we're obviously interested in the angle alpha plus beta, specifically the cosine of that angle. Now the cosine ratio is the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. So if we look at our green highlighted triangle here, 
uh, for alpha plus beta, the adjacent is OB and the hypotenuse is OA. So the cos of alpha plus beta is equal to OB divided by OA. And I'm just going to multiply through this equation by OA to get us an equation for OB. And specifically, if we do that, we get OB is equal to OA times the cosine of alpha plus beta. And again, I'm gonna highlight that in blue because I'm going to use that relationship again in a moment. Okay, so moving on now, let's look at a, a different triangle. And this time we'll look at uh, triangle ODC, which is highlighted in orange here. And in that triangle, we are going to focus our attention on angle alpha, okay? Specifically, the cosine of angle alpha. Now, why? Well, once again, we know that we are, are trying to derive the cosine addition formula, and in that formula, we do see some cosine alpha. Uh, terms coming up. So what is the cosine of alpha? Well, looking at our orange triangle here, we see the cosine is the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. So that is OC divided by OD. So we can write that out. Cosine of alpha is OC over OD. And once again, we'll multiply through by OD to get us an equation for OC. And that'll give us OC equals OD cos alpha. So we've highlighted that because we are going to use that relationship momentarily. All right, for our next relationship that's going to help us develop the cosine addition formula, we need to know the value of this angle up here. That is angle EAD. And we can actually figure it out quite easily using similar triangles. Specifically, if we look at uh, triangle OFB highlighted in yellow down here, and triangle AFD, also highlighted in yellow here, uh, we have that those two triangles are indeed similar. That is, their side lengths are in proportion and their angles are equal. And we can quickly show that their angles are equal by first noting that they both have a right angle. Uh, in the lower triangle, that right angle is right here. And in our upper triangle, the right angle is right here. Furthermore, these two angles here are opposite which means they're also equal. And then automatically that means that the third angle in each of those triangles must also be equal. And in our lower triangle here, we know that that third angle is alpha. So therefore in our upper triangle, that third angle must also be alpha. So we did it. We figured out that that angle EAD is alpha. So now let's take a look at the triangle AED, that right triangle right there. We're going to again focus our attention on angle alpha, and this time we're going to talk about the sine of angle alpha. So the sine of alpha is the opposite divided by the hypotenuse, so the opposite is ED, and the hypotenuse is AD. So we can say that sine alpha is ED divided by AD, and just like we did before, let's multiply through this equation by our denominator AD to give us an expression or an equation for ED, which is ED equals AD sine alpha. So we have that relationship there, but we can actually do something else with this relationship. Notice that when we look at our diagram, that segment ED is equal in length to segment BC. And that is just by the construction of the diagram. If we look at BC and ED, they have to have the same length. So in our relationship or our equation up here, we could actually replace ED with BC. And that's what we're going to do. And you'll see where this is going momentarily, but let's just rewrite this equation, uh, replacing ED with BC. So we get BC equals AD sine alpha. And I'll highlight that in blue because I'm about to use that relationship again. All right, moving forward, we're going to recall a relationship from earlier, specifically the one that says OB is equal to OC minus BC. Now notice that this equation has the form of our cosine addition formula. That is, it states that something is equal to something minus something. That's exactly what we had in our cosine addition formula. Some term is equal to another term minus another term. So it has the right form. All we need to do is make the appropriate substitutions for OB, OC, and BC to arrive at that cosine addition formula. And it turns out that we do have expressions for OB, OC, and BC. Specifically, we know that OB 
is equal to OA cos alpha plus beta. So we can replace OB with that expression. Similarly, OC is equal to OD cos alpha. So we can replace OC with that expression. And lastly, BC is equal to AD sine alpha. So we can substitute that for BC. And when we make those substitutions, we get this expression. And you can probably see that uh, we are beginning to get close to that cosine addition formula right now. So we have OA cos alpha plus beta is equal to OD cos alpha minus AD sine alpha. Now the cosine addition formula starts with cos alpha plus beta. So we really don't want this OA here, but we can easily get rid of that by dividing the entire equation, that is every term, by OA. And when we do that, we arrive at this equation. So now we really, we're getting close. We really kind of start seeing that cosine addition formula here, but we don't want OD over OA and AD over OA here. We'd like to substitute those expressions um, with some trigonometric expressions. And we can do that by looking at triangle OAD. So if we look at that triangle, I'll highlight it in green here for you. Notice that triangle OAD does contain segments OD right here and OA right here and AD right here. So let's start by talking about OD over OA. Well, OD is right here and OA is right here. Now, if we're talking about angle beta, notice that OD is the adjacent side and OA is the hypotenuse. And adjacent divided by hypotenuse, that is OD divided by OA, would be the cosine of angle beta. So we could say that that OD over OA is just cos beta. And in a minute, we'll substitute cos beta for OD over OA. And you can probably see where this is going now. But similarly, we can do, uh, we can do that for AD over OA. Looking at our triangle here, there's AD right there and OA is right here. Now again, if we talk about angle beta, AD is the opposite and OA is the hypotenuse. And opposite over hypotenuse, well, that's the sine ratio. So AD over OA is equal to sine beta. So we can write that out. And once again, we can actually replace AD over OA with sine beta. And that is what we are going to do. And when we make those substitutions, we get this. And you can really, really see it now, the cosine addition formula. In fact, all we need to do to get the, um, the cosine addition formula that we saw at the beginning of this video is to do some rearranging here, specifically just change the order of multiplication here and here. And when we do that, there it is, the cosine addition formula. Cos of alpha plus beta is equal to cos alpha cos beta minus sine alpha sine beta. And that is it. That is the cosine addition formula, uh, specifically its derivation. Now, as mentioned before, the nice thing is for the cosine subtraction formula, as well as the sine and tangent uh, addition and subtraction formulas, you don't need to go through a big geometric uh, derivation like this. You can just use that cosine addition formula and come up with the other ones algebraically. It's very quick and it's quite simple. And once again, I'll put a link to a document in the description of this video so you can take a look at those algebraic derivations if you so choose. I hope you enjoyed. Take care.